Blessings. Shalom fam. This is Crystal from God's Kingdom Counselor. Um, not coming for a word today. I just want to talk to you guys about um, the Apocrypha books. Um, uh, last year I actually bought the Sefer, Sefer Bible. It has a lot of the lost books in there like Enoch, Joshua, Ezra, Bell of the Dragon. The list goes on. Um, so I'm kind of glad that I have this. I'm still learning because a lot of some of the words are Hebrew in there and it it's kind of a little confusing having to go back and forth and uh, interpret what exactly word because a lot of the words inside of it um, can have different meanings of God or Jesus. So i um, still learning how to, to do that. Um, my mom did put me through Hebrew school when I was a kid, but I forgot all about that now. So um, don't mind me. I mean, my dirty, it's not dirty, it's actually clean, it's just stained, um, uh, just relaxing today. I have the whole house to myself till tomorrow because they're gone camping, so I kind of had the place to myself for the whole weekend, which was nice, but um, my roommate's uh, sister dropped off their dogs because they couldn't have them at the campsite, like they can't leave them off on, like on the leash and unattended, they had to hold on to the leash the whole entire time so now there's five dogs in the house so at times it could be kind of hectic all that barking but anyways I'm gonna get into it so uh, me reading Ezra's um, 2 which is Ezra 4 um, the, in the um, in the Sefer which you can also read it online for yourselves um, as I, I, I was meditating on it a while ago and um, I always thought to myself, why did they actually remove the Apocrypha from the 1611 KJV? So I Googled it and did my research and um, it was actually the Protestants and the Catholics are the ones that removed it from the Bible. I'm sorry, but that doesn't surprise me at all. There's obviously um, reasons why they... The reasons they had, it wasn't really valid. They used a couple of scriptures and that was it. It wasn't like a whole list or anything. And I noticed that they didn't even mention Ezra's, not even once on the article that I read, the reason why they removed it. So to me, that is very fishy for one. What are they hiding? They're obviously, they don't want people to know the truth. Of course, the Satan always hides the truth. So in Ezra's 2, which is Ezra's 4, talks a lot about the end times, about the end days. And there's even instructions and it ties a lot about even from the Old Testament, even into the New Testament. If you know your Bible, you will see it for yourself. And Jesus is mentioned many times in there. So obviously, why are they removing it? There's always a reason for it. So if you guys have not read it I advise you guys to go and read it there's even audio bible for some of you guys that people don't know don't like to read they like to rather to have the audio you can even search Ezra's 2 talks about the end days on there so go ahead and I advise you guys to check it out for yourselves and you'll see because a lot of it shows a lot like different meanings and I'm just going to talk a little bit on here about it. Um, my camera only does 22 minutes, so um, I'm going to try to be as quick as I can and try to get some of the important parts on here. But for one, they do talk about how um, Asia will be judged for their inventions. Again, Asia is the most top number one in the whole entire world for their inventions, how they're putting robots into human form and so forth. Um, there's a video that I watched about Asia, how advanced they are. <clears throat> they have people, they don't even have people that run in certain grocery stores. It's all electronic. Um, the door opens, you can go by with your phone, come out, and it, your face recognition, just, it's crazy. If you actually knew all the stuff that goes on in China and Japan and all that, you will see for yourselves. Um, I watched a lot of those videos at one time and point in my life. So, um, but yeah, that's just showing a lot. Anyways, so there's just some scriptures here I want to tackle here um, that uh, that has really been on my heart. So, um, let's see here. Holy Spirit, just help lead me. So here they're talking about Jesus. This is, um, chapter six. Um, and I'm going to, um, kind of read kind of about the end days. It's all about the end days, but just, just some little sections. I'm going to go from there. So it starts in chapter six, verse 18, and I'm going to read it. And it says, 
And it said, Behold, the day comes that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. And I got 1 Corinthians 4, 5 from that. Verse 19, And will begin to make inquisition of them that they that be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when their affliction of Tyson would be Zion shall be fulfilled. Now in inquisition actually means a period of prolonged and intensive questioning or investigation. It's like being accountable for everything that you have done. <laughs> so what the Lord was showing me like through my through since this walk with him is, you know, we're being recorded 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So um, when that day of judgment comes, um, somebody can't say, you know, well, I didn't know. And God could be pulling up that screen and be like, well, my person, my servant told you here, 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 and you rejected me. I showed you here, 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 and you, reject you rejected me and so forth and so forth. And then they will say, well, then they can't say anything because they, everybody's accountable and they are shown every single thing, part of their life. Um, as it is in revelation that everybody will be judged according to their deeds, to their works. So I'm going to continue and it says verse 20. And when the world shall be begin to vanish away and shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The sephirium, the angels, shall be opened before the expanse of the earth, and they shall see all to see all together. Now this part was very interesting. This is kind of um showing that when these times comes, just like in Matthew 24, when you see rumors of wars and and so forth that that know that the end is near. So to me, I felt like this part here was showing a lot because then the verses ahead show about Jesus. So I'm just going to read it and talks about children. So in verse 21, and it says, and the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. The woman with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old, and they shall live and be raised up. Wow. So children are truly knowledge shall increase. It even says that in the scriptures. So children's knowledge have been increased. There are, there's children that are so young, that are so smart and intelligent, speaking adult words. Like some of these videos that I see that are on YouTube just blow my mind. So uh, just watch out for that. And a lot of People can have, the women can have children that are um, premature, can have them already at seven, maybe eight months old. I know my brother was born premature, I think at seven, seven or eight months. So, and he was like two pounds. So know that to watch this, to, to look out for verse 22, and suddenly shall sown places appear upon unsown and the full storehouses shall suddenly be empty. This is the famine and the chauffeur shall give a sound which when every man hears, they shall suddenly be afraid. Again, God is reminding me of that dream that he gave me that father God was talking in the sky and the whole world heard him and they didn't even fear like and I was like in panic mode. So that was just tying with that again in verse 24 and it says, and the time shall friends Fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell thereon. My back's getting on fire. Thank you, Lord. And springs of the fountain shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. Whosoever remains from all these that I have told you shall escape. And see my Yeshua. And it says 945 right between in small letter, small numbers, I mean, and it means salvation and the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth and their heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turn into another meaning. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Of course, God's truth shall be declared to the ends of the earth. So Lord was giving me Matthew 24, 10. And those who endure to the end shall be saved. Again, this is talking about the salvation. Jesus is our salvation. 
So I'm just going to go down here. Um, let's see what else. So um, in chapter six, it talks about the seven uh, days of creation. Sorry, I'm just looking at my time on there. I'm almost at 10 minutes. Um, so then again, in chapter seven, it actually talks about the narrow way, the narrow path, um, which talks about in Matthew. And so I'm just going to read it to, from Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So um, chapter seven and verse six, and it says, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And there is but one path between them, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once, because that gate is narrow. And if the city now were in given unto a man for inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before him, how shall he receive his inheritance? And the Lord was showing me, so we must walk through the fire with him um, before receiving our inheritance. Those who um, do everything and all of that he commanded, and then everything shall be added unto you. So um, you can't just be saved and live your life the way that you want to and you're not going to go through your pruning and you're not going to go through your process and you think that you are going to get all these things that God has ordained for you right away. It doesn't work that way. God has order and he has structure. Every single one of us believers that are saved, we must go through a process. We must go through a, a, a refining within us. He has to strip us of certain things for us to go to our promised land for us to inherit all the things that are coming from Abraham because we are Abraham's seed. These are not in my notes. Again, I feel like the Lord is speaking on this. We must go through a refining. You know, um, when when Jesus comes back, you know, we're, we are supposed to be pot, pot. We are supposed to be spotless before him. We can't, can't have anything that is dirty within us. So how should we enter heaven if we're filthy? We can't. Everybody has to go through a process. And nobody's perfect. Nobody will ever be perfect. But as long as we repent and, and turn from our ways and we learn from the things as we grow and, you know, as the years go by, we're a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It will never happen overnight. God could elevate you overnight if you're going through your process, but it takes time. So don't fear, you guys, don't fear. So um, anyways, I'm going to go down here to, um, this is um, chapter 7, and I'm just going to read here um, in verse 22 to 24, and it says, Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spoke against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of El, El Elyon, which means the most high God, that he is not and knew not his ways, but the Torah word God's word have they despised and denied his covenant in his statues have they not been faithful and have not performed his works again it says that we shall be um um judge according to our words so the lord gave me scriptures at the end of those verses and you guys can go back and meditate and it was coming from revelations 20 verse 12 1 peter 1 verse 17 2 Corinthians 5 10 and Romans 2 6 now it talks about Jesus um in verse 25 saying on I'm just gonna take a sip of the coffee here sorry I'm also getting a little dry I'm fasting I'm not supposed to drink coffee but whatever so verse 25 and therefore Ezra for the empty are empty things and for the full are full things behold the time shall come that these tokens which I have told you shall come to pass and the bride shall appear and shall coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth and whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evil shall see my wonders 
For my son Yahusha shall be revealed to those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within four hundred years. Verse 29, And after these years shall my son Mashiach die, and all men that have life. Now, I was wondering about the 400 years, so I was Googling um, 400 years um, before Jesus was crucified, and I was reading, and it was talking about the biblical years of silence. So that, so that is tied up. It actually happened, i um, just reading on my notes, and it says, for at least 400 years passed between the prophecies of Malachi in 430 to 420 BC and Matthew written account of Jesus's life in 50 to 60 AC. So again, that ties, do your research. So it talks a lot about, um, and I felt this part was very important. It says in verse 37, and it says, then El Elon, which means the most high God shall say unto the nations that have been raised from the dead, look now and understand whom ye have denied, whom ye have not served, whose commandments you have despised. Look aside, not unto that, that are delight in the rest and there are fire and torments. Thus he will speak to them on the day of judgment. So again, God is saying, this is Matthew 24, that you need to, we need to be, those are going to be judged. Those who do not serve God, those who do not obey his commandments, those who despise him, those who deny him. Very, very important. Now there's only four minutes remaining. And I just feel like, um, in chapter, I think, is it chapter still chapter seven here. Yeah. It's still chapter seven. It actually talks about death and there's seven, um, seven, um, wave ways. And then there's, um, seven orders because God is of order. So there's seven righteous orders. So I just, hopefully that I'll just quickly read them quickly. I only got like three minutes and something or five minutes left. So I'm just going to quickly read it. I just feel like these are super important. So I'm going to read it. And it says from, um, verse 78 and it says now concerning death the teaching is when the dis decisive decree has gone forth from el elion that a man shall die as the ruach leaves the body in return again to him who gave it which means the holy spirit when you die first of all it adores the glory of el elion and it is one of the who's have shown scorn, have not guarded the ways of El Elyon, the Most High, and who have despised his Torah, and who have hated those who fear Elohim. Such ruch, ruch shall not enter into habitations, shall immediately wander about in torment, ever grieving and sad in seven ways. The first way is because they have scorned the Torah of the Most High. Second, because they cannot now make a good repentant that they may live. Because repentance is super important. Number three, they shall see the reward laid up for those that have trusted the covenants of the Most High. All the righteous, they will see the righteous. Fourth, they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last days. The dead shall rise. Five, they shall see how the habitations of the others are guarded by angels is in profound quiet. Six, they shall see how some of them will pass over into torment. Seven, which is worse than all the ways that they have mentioned because they shall utterly waste the weight and confusion and be consumed by the shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of the Most High before whom they have sinned while they were alive, before whom they are to be judged in the last times. 88. Now this is the order of those that have guarded the ways of the Most High when they shall be separated from their mortal body. During the time that they lived in it, they la laboriously served the Most High and withstanding danger every hour. Meaning they stood with God every single hour, every single minute. They endured all the way to the end. They, they might guard the Torah and the Torah given perfectly. Therefore, this is the teaching concerning them. First of all, they shall see with great joy and the glory of him who received them, for they shall have rested seven orders. So these are the seven orders. I hope I'm not going to run out of time. First order, because they have striven and with great effort to overcome the evil thought which was formed in them. 
that it might not lead them astray from life into death. Two, because they see the perplexity in which the souls of the wicked wander and the punishment that awaits them. Three, they see the witness when which who formed them bears concerning them that while they were alive, they guarded the Torah, which was given them in trust. Number four, they understand the rest of which they now enjoy being gathered into their chambers and guarded by angels in profound quiet and glory, which awaits them in the last days. Five, they rejoice that they have now escaped what is corruptible and shall inherit what is to come. Besides, they see the strait and toil from which they will have been delivered from and the spacious liberty which they have received and enjoy in mortality, live forever with God. Number six, when it is shown to them how their face is to shine like the sun and how they are to be made like the light of the stars, being incorruptible from then on. Number seven, which is gathered then all that have been mentioned, because they shall rejoice with boldness, and shall be confined without confusion, and shall be glad without fear. For they hasten, behold the face of him whom they served in life, and from whom they are to receive their reward when glorified. This is the order of the souls of the righteous and henceforth is announced and er therefore said is the ways of torment and which of those that will not heed shall suffer hereon. I only have a minute left. So I'm telling you guys, you guys really need to go and read Ezra's. Ezra's 2, which is Ezra's 4. It talks a lot about like there is just so much. I don't even have the time and it, and it ties in so much with the Bible. They're obviously hiding the truth for a reason. They don't want us to know the instructions, what is going to happen. Even from Enoch talks a lot about it too. So I'm telling you guys, I just thought I would share this with you guys. Go back and read it. Go check it out for yourselves. They obviously removed it for a reason. Anyways, I love you guys. Stay blessed. I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. So shalom. Bye for now.